Okay, cool. So my name is Sam McLaren. I work in the digital team and I, I've done a couple of sessions as part of service this week. And today I'm going to be talking about how to create a well-being environment for your team. So I might not answer all the questions you have. I might uh, hopefully we'll answer some of them, but um, by the end of the session, you should at least take one thing away as what I'm hoping. But before we get into the main bulk of the session, just make sure everyone's awake and kind of make sure everyone's mentally warmed up. Um, I'm just going to ask a question, which is I thought appropriate for a well-being session, which is uh, how are you doing? So you, uh, everyone either put, you can put a full answer about how you're doing in chat, you can put a reaction or you can just put a number, which is what I've done in a couple of icebreakers before. I'm seeing lots of thumbs up come up, which is good. Oh, loads of thumbs up. Smiley face, that's good. Good, okay, that's good. Everyone's awake and everyone seems like they're good for now, which is maybe I might not ask at the end of the presentation, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so before I talk around keeping people engaged, I'm just going to talk a little bit around how people become disengaged. So what do you think? So you can either put something in the chat or um, speak up and just unmute. What do you think makes people disengage? So whether that's not listening or just not engaging with any team activities or meetings or anything like that, what do you think it, it does that makes people disengage? Distractions, that's a good one. Too much, yeah, too much work is one that comes up a lot. Worrying, stress, being talked at, finding it boring. Yeah, okay, yeah, these are all, all right, on hitting the nail on the head. Okay, so what happens when someone becomes disengaged is they they tend to kind of drift off um, and either whether that's not going to team meetings or turning their camera off and not engaging or not getting involved in any of these extra activities and things that they could be doing or not messaging anyone they tend they tend to drift off um, quick slide note she, uh, they could have fit both of them on there I'm just putting that on the record uh, James Cameron, I'm coming after you, but um, yeah, so drifting off uh, is something that happens quite a lot. I'm sure you probably either yourself or you know, you know someone who might have done that and it's really hard to pull someone back once they get that disengagement. Once they start down that path, they tend to become, whether that's lonely or they feel like things are against them and then everything seems different. So people joking around in the team might seem like a bunch of inside jokes because they've disengaged themselves and then that pushes them even further away. So to do the flip side of that, so how do you keep people engaged and, and try to prevent them from kind of drifting off and feeling disengaged and alone and, and like there's all these inside jokes and then they're not part of the core team or the inner circle. So one important thing uh, that might seem obvious uh, is building rapport. So you can build rapport with anyone, um, building rapport when you're presenting a meeting, building rapport with people in your team, building rapport with people in a, a group on a project. How do you think you can build rapport with people? What what are some ideas in terms of how you can build rapport? A good example is what I'm doing right now, if that helps. Not. <laughs> Ask them about themselves, yeah. Common interest is a great one. Listening to them. Asking a question, that's what I was, yeah. So uh, by not presenting at you for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, uh, instead I'm asking questions and getting your involvement, it means that there's more of a rapport there and more interaction. And asking how you are at the start of the session means that 
we're now closer than if I just kind of spoke at you for half an hour and then ended the session. Yeah, find out what they like, checking in with people, checking in with people is a good one. Yeah, and being genuine, doing a fun activity. Oh, you see, you guys are beating me to it. Do I? <laughs> anyway, um, a lot of these I go through. So um, I know it was mentioned like fun activities, uh, team activities. Uh, I can go through, I'm going to go through that a bit later on about some stuff we've been doing in the team, whether that's even an icebreaker in a session or quizzes or anything like that. Interaction. So if you have a team meeting or a project group or an update, don't go straight into right, let's get the update and let's get to work, have some interaction, ask questions and have an icebreaker just to break it up or ask people how they are because you get to some meetings and some people just dive straight into like, let's talk about this report and things like that. Keeping it light is another one that seems really obvious, but I'm sure there's people that you know or meetings you've been in or presentations you've watched where you think that, gosh, this person's taken themselves way too seriously. And it's normally not about something that is particularly a serious subject. So it's keep um, keeping things light, which help people to keep engaged. And then the most, there's one that's the most important that I know a couple of you have mentioned in the chat, but what do you think the most important thing is that you could be doing to keep people engaged and help? See if anything's come through in chat. Asking for their input, that's a good one. It's along the same, it's along the same lines. Um, I'll, I'll, this one, this one might be quite, it seem like it's not obvious, but it, it's quite obvious. I'll go through it. So it's, it's what I did right at the start. It's um, it's the voice. Uh, so building rapport through voice, asking the right questions, uh, all the aspects of it, checking up on people, messaging people, how messages are perceived as well. Um, you'll be surprised the impact of just sticking a smiley face on a message can have to someone else where it, but it might not mean anything to you. Uh, lots of stuff like that. So uh, I, I spoke about team activities, things like that. I am going to go into what we've been doing in the digital team, which again, we're not uh, we're not perfect. We still have a, quite a lot of these issues in our team, but um, we've been trying to try out lots of different things, throwing enough at the wall and hope seeing what sticks. But before I do that, I'm going to bring it back round to you guys. And I'm going to see a kind of sense check on the base, what I would call the basics for this sort of thing. Because I saw an article uh, not that long ago that was talking about how to keeping your team engaged and get good well being and how to make sure everyone's happy. And it was around doing team check ins and having coffee breaks that people can log into and doing icebreakers and activities and all this sort of stuff I spoke about. And it would seem like it came out right at the start, start of lockdown because it seemed like it had that um, way it was written, but it only came out about a month or so ago. So there's clearly there's a lot of areas that this is still new to them. So how many people uh, are doing kind of coffee breaks, team check ins, whether that's like once a week or twice a week? Are they doing any activities with their team? Are they doing like in even little icebreakers and things? What 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 are people doing, if anything, with their teams? Funny facts is a good one, yeah. Quiz, that's good. Skype check in, yeah. We we had we had so many quizzes at the start of lockdown that we're all a bit quizzed uh, quizzed out now in our team. So we've we've been trying to mix it up a bit. But I'll go through that in a second. Yeah, social time, chats over coffee. Yeah, okay. It's good. Weekly catch ups. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Origami, that's, that's, that's a good one. Um, OK. Tea breaks, teamings, a couple of quizzes. Good. This good. I, I'm hoping I was hoping that uh, everyone would have that sort of thing, because that's what I'm, I would call the kind of baseline in terms of this sort of thing. And then you can use the build on that. Fibbage, that's a good game. Uh, so you can build on the baseline with all the newer stuff. To, because 
Well, I'll go through that in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so what have we been doing in the team? I'll go through some of the stuff that we've been doing. This is ranging across uh, lockdowns. So we've done quizzes, like a couple of people mentioned. We've done a variety of different types of quizzes and like buzzing in quizzes and things like that. Uh, I've done two sessions of Taskmaster. If anyone's familiar with the TV show, I'm a big fan of Taskmaster. So I've done two sessions of that, which is good because one of the things on Taskmaster is the first thing they do is uh, a prize task. And so we've had people finding the most embarrassing purchase they have in their house and their most valuable item they have in their house. And it helps to kind of break down the virtual barrier that people have. If you imagine seeing someone behind a camera, but actually seeing them go up and get something out of their house helps to break that down. Uh, we've done colouring uh, a couple of weeks ago. We did a team colouring session where people just we just chatted and we had these colouring um, templates and things that we did. And what was really interesting about that is uh, when people are colouring and just relaxing and doing that, even though they're concentrating on the colouring, people tend to relax with the way they're talking as well. And we didn't really talk about work at all. And that wasn't a conscious thing. That was just something that happened. We've just started uh, rolling out what I've called the digital team game show. So a different person is going to host every I think every month and it's going to be a different type of game show. We have like countdown and then my like, uh, Lisa, the manager of my team is going to be doing blankety blank and like loads of stuff like that. We've done Pictionary. You have to excuse some of the drawings on this. <laughs> um, not got very good drawings in my team, but Pictionary is another one because that's really easy to do as well. You don't have to prep anything for it. You just share the whiteboard on teams and then you just kind of find the generator online or you just make up some things for people to draw and then you can do it that way i was interested that origami was mentioned before because we've done we did around christmas we did uh, christmas star making which was fun though it's quite stressful uh we've had uh, a kind of work event like you would forgive the work drinks at the pub we had a christmas do that we went to where we all virtually drank which was fun but i'll have to talk about that after the recording um we around halloween we did i think this was mentioned in like need to know or something i can't remember but we did pumpkin carving that was another fun one this one i can't remember the context of but i just found the picture and we're wearing hats for some reason so i, I don't remember the context of that one but the key the key point here is around um the variation having lots of variation means that someone might not they might not want to come to the game show but then they might want to come to the draw the drawing and we've consistently across the board had there's the same people that tend to come to some things but completely different people and everything so it's about mixing up what you're doing and i wouldn't replace what you're doing with with something different i would keep what you're already doing whether that's games or quizzes and things like that and just add something else into the mix as well and you might get some more people engaged so bringing this background to well-being so i'm going to go about how this helps with people's well-being the first thing that people here might not be thinking but i know some people will be thinking is that, that it's not work it's not work related you, you can't do it in work hours um the fact that it's not work is true but it that doesn't that shouldn't matter and it doesn't matter because it's all about people's well-being especially at the moment uh, when people are probably feeling a bit down and they're starting to disengage, this sort of thing is going to think the thing that brings them back. So there's a little graphic I found, it's called the five ways to well-being. It has be aware, be informed, be connected, be generous and be active. So by doing these sort of activities and things as a team, how many of those do you think you'd be ticking off? Yeah, someone's seen through my trick question. <laughs> uh, yeah, is there's some interpretation there, but it's it's really it's all of them because you're going to be aware um, of other people in the team and what they're doing because you're going to slip into those conversations. It's the same with the be informed. You're going to connect with the other people, whether that's just through funny things that they've done or um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, but some of the I embarrassing items that people had in that Taskmaster session is good because now it creates those those jokes and connections between people generous 
in, you could interpret as kind of being generous with your time because what I find really interesting is sometimes you might not feel like uh, going to colouring but someone else might want you to come to colouring and then having that being generous with your time will create that engagement and that um, link between people and then being active you're not f physically active obviously doing walks and things like that's going to have your help with your own physical well-being but mentally being active and doing different things is going to help you because you never know you might come up with an idea for something you're doing at work by a question in a quiz and things like that because your brain will shut down but you will still be coming up with ideas so i've kind of covered the list a little bit already so how how do you start doing this sort of thing a lot of you are already doing a lot of stuff which is good but the easiest thing to do is just to relax first thing make some time and um, whether that's moving things about or just or just sticking something in if if there's uh, anything you want to do you can either come up with your own ideas copying game shows and things is normally quite a good place to start or something that already exists as well like, like scavenger hunt's a great idea and feel free to steal any of the stuff that we've done and just do it is the simplest way to say really is like you you stick something in it might not work for everyone's calendars you might only get a couple of people turn up but then you're going to affect those couple of people and then the next time you might get more people we might get different people if you run one session of something every month or every two weeks and you get three different people every time depending on the size of your team eventually you're going to have that positive influence on the rest of the team so i've kind of whisked through that a lot quicker than i thought i would but then that gives me gives me time for questions does anyone have any questions i can stop the recording if you want to ask me something and you don't want to be on the recording i can just trim it actually did you say there was um a whiteboard on teams yes did I hear you say? oh i didn't so did you show us how that is if if you go up to where you'd normally share your screen yeah you can you can actually there should be an option which goes desktop window and it should have whiteboard on there as well if you click on the share but don't share yeah so if you Content. if you click on it one of the options because you normally sh show your different windows and things one of the options will be for whiteboard oh yeah and that's that's a real simple way uh to do things like pictionary or people to, you can get people to doodle at the start of a meeting that's quite a, a fun oh, I one like that. Or, thank you <laughs> that's right or um, an icebreaker one is uh, sometimes just asking people to put a number like I did about how they're feeling. Oh, you started sharing the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about anyone that. Else? I didn't mean That's to. That's all right. <laughs> Apologies. Does anyone else have any questions? I'll stop the recording then. <laughs>